The Citizenship Amendment Act has been challenged in the Supreme Court. The contention is that the Act is unconstitutional and violates Article 14 of the Indian Constitution. The question is, will this Act stand the test of judicial scrutiny? Let's take a look at some of the past precedents which would suggest that the Act would pass the legal test. The Supreme Court in the David John Hopkins vs. the Union of India case of 1997 had said that the government of India has an unrestricted power to refuse citizenship without assigning any reason whatsoever. Hopkins being a foreign national cannot claim equal rights under Article 14 of the Constitution of India with that of the Indian nationals. We are of the further view that Section 14.1 of the Act is not ultra wise Article 14 of the Constitution of India because the foreign nationals do not have any fundamental rights guaranteed for the grant of Indian citizenship, the Supreme Court had said. This makes it clear that when a foreign national is denied citizenship, he or she cannot claim equal rights under Article 14 of the Constitution. Further, the judgment also indicates that in matters of policy, the Constitution does not let the court direct a government. The argument is that the absence of the act being made available to the Muslim community is ultra wise of the constitution. The latest amendment has added a provision to that of any person belonging to Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, Jain, Parsis and Christian community from Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan shall not be treated as an illegal migrant. It also says that persons should have entered India before December 31st, 2014 and should have been exempted by central government under any relevant law. The amendment is restricted to three countries where Islam is the official state religion. This means that the said communities named in the amendment are minorities in these countries. The amendment only provides a relaxation to these persons who form a minority group in these countries. Moreover, the amendment does not prevent minorities from applying for citizenship and also does not declare fresh foreign Muslim applicants as illegal immigrants. More importantly, this amendment falls under the category of a policy decision and is not the subject of Article 14. This makes it amply clear that the amendment has easily passed the test laid down in Article 14. Article 14 provides equality before the law, however, there are reasonable restrictions. In the Ramkrishna Dalmia vs. Justice R. Tendulkar case, the Supreme Court had reiterated the meaning of Article 14. Article 14 permits classification so long as it is reasonable but forbids class legislation. Black's Law Dictionary says class legislation is a term applied to statutory enactments which divide the people or subject of legislation into classes with reference either to the grant of privileges or the imposition of burden upon an arbitrary, unjust or invidious principle of division or which though the principle of division may be sound and justifiable makes arbitrary discrimination between those persons or things coming within the same class. The Supreme Court also said that the classification of groups of people is considered to be reasonable when the classification is based upon intelligible differentia that distinguishes person or things that are grouped from others that are left out of the groups and the differential has rational relation with the objective of the act. Article 11 of the constitution says parliament is empowered to make any law relating to the acquisition or termination of citizenship and all other matters relating to citizenship. Hence the Citizenship Amendment Act is well within the rights of the parliament and will stand in the test of its judicial scrutiny.